Liberty Me. I'm Kyle Platt here with MK Lords. MK is writer at Bitcoin Magazine, creator of Bitcoin Not Bombs, cryptocurrency expert, and fire dancer. That's exciting. Thanks so much for being on. Thanks for having me. And just a small correction, I am the editor of Bitcoin Not Bombs. Drew Phillips is actually the creator. Drew Phillips. Sorry, Drew. I don't want to steal a thunder. All right. But it's it's a great (laughs) program. And okay, so the... I want to start with a story about how we met because I think it's really funny. So like debate is everywhere in the libertarian community these days. Everybody loves infighting. Everybody loves to have their feuds. And so uh, everybody is debating now and the name, your name kept popping up. Everybody was crying out, you know, MK Lords has to debate Kathy Reisenwitz or somebody, you know, she has to debate this person. But you never, like, it was never you saying it, that you wanted to debate these people. Everyone was volunteering you to do this. And so I thought, who is this? Because I, you know, I don't know everybody. So I, I looked you up and I thought, okay, well, actually, if she were to debate these people, it would be a huge waste of time because what she's doing is so much more important than like petty infighting and debating. (laughs) So Bitcoin Not Bombs and Bitcoin Magazine, but specifically Bitcoin Not Bombs is super interesting to me because instead of all this infighting, what you're doing is you've figured out a way, or you and, and the people you're working with at Bitcoin Not Bombs, figured out a way to use cryptocurrency and use this kind of, you know, non-state-based libertarian currency to help people, to, you know, for altruistic means. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, so libertarians have a lot of really excellent (laughs) philosophy, and and they spend a lot of time time writing about it and debating each other, and as far as the infighting thing goes, I mean, I I find it interesting to see the different perspectives people have on things. I I think it's, uh, you know, great to dialogue over it, but what it comes down to for me is action. Um, I'm an agorist, so I'm very much into action-based activism. Uh, so with Bitcoin, it kind of makes the philosophy of a lot of libertarian and anarchist principles able to be applied in a real world sense that can actually help people. So at Bitcoin Not Bombs, we do this annual project called Hoodie the Homeless, where we take Bitcoin donations and we feed and clothe homeless people um, as winter is kind of uh, starting. Um, I also work with Sean's Outpost. They're, they're a much bigger uh, homeless outreach group. They're feeding people every single day in Pensacola, Florida, where I'm from, through only Bitcoin donations. And they also take Dogecoin and a few other cryptocurrencies, too. So that's what I'm really interested in, is Bitcoin kind of bridges this gap between philosophy and direct action activism. And it allows real-world solutions that you can see in real time too, uh, you know, it, we don't have to hypothesize, you know, that these things, that Bitcoin can be used for these things. It is a solution right now. Sure, definitely. Um, so can we waste a little bit of time on philosophy then? <laughs> and the kind of Absolutely. infighting? We'll, we'll get back to, uh, to the actual action because, you know, agorism is the answer. I agree with you completely. Building alternative institutions to replace the state, I think, is just... I mean, wonderful stuff. And instead of just, you know, paying lip service to anarchism, it's actually applying it, which is beautiful. But, you know, once again, you know, everybody brings up your name in these debates. And I wanted to know, what is your take on this whole thin libertarianism, thick libertarianism, feminism kind of um, hubbub that's going on right now? So it, it's interesting. I haven't been able to keep up with all of it because I am in the middle of uh, organizing the Bitcoin in the Beltway Conference in D.C. But it is interesting. So I come from the left. Uh, I think my background as a socialist feminist is really useful uh, in this area because I, I've seen the other side of the argument on that kind of extreme left spectrum. Um, and I think it's it's really interesting to see the directions people are kind of taking things. So as far as thin and thick libertarianism, I don't know that I have, I've found an article that really correctly defines either side. I really get the sense that it's a misunderstanding of a very small semantic issue. Um, I don't really identify as a thin or thick libertarian. Um, I'm, you know, I I have a blog that I jokingly call extremely in between because on on a lot of these topics, I tend to take kind of a middle ground 
approach. Um, I don't identify as a feminist anymore, for example, but I do think you could be feminist and libertarian. Um, I don't know that I necessarily, I don't like to do activists with fe activism with a lot of feminists because 90% of feminists, or maybe even more than that, tend to want to use the state to solve problems. And even though there are some very interesting anarcho feminists and individualist feminists, it's very much the minority. So you're kind of fighting this uphill battle within the greater feminist spectrum. So I don't really find it to be a useful term. I find it to be pretty divisive. Um, but I don't, um, I, I really enjoy the readings of like Wendy McElroy and, and a few other libertarian feminists. I, I think they make excellent points. Um, and I do find it to be, uh, you know, very, uh, there, there's a lot of layers to the philosophy, but I think you are kind of fighting an uphill battle with a lot of that. And then as far as infighting in general, I, I find it to be generally useful, but um, at the same time, I, I kind of have to uh, laugh at it because these are people who are claiming that they don't need leaders and they don't need rulers, and then they're going to these kind of like more vocally libertarians kind of fighting their battles for them or fighting alongside with them and kind of looking up to these people as if they're almost idols. And as an anarchist, that kind of creeps me out. And it also, I think, distracts a bit from the actual problems. Like, there are people dying in other countries. I don't care that Kathy Reisenwitz want, doesn't want to debate Chris Cantwell. Honestly, like, I mean, I, I don't really understand her reasons why, but I mean, they're kind of bigger fish to fry. And I, I really wish if, it would be nice to see libertarians focus as much energy on those things as they do on, you know, arguing for like, you know, hundreds and hundreds long common threads. That's kind of my take on that. Amen. Oh my goodness. That No, that's beautiful to hear though. I mean, it's, it, it really is such a waste of time. And I thought it was interesting too that it seems like a lot of people want to define in and out like what is libertarianism, what is not libertarianism, but you seem to have a really like broad and open idea of like what libertarianism can be. And perhaps maybe we shouldn't be trying to define people in and out of it. You know, are you doing good things? You know, are you, do you believe that we should shrink or, you know, eliminate the state? You know, that's okay, great, you're a libertarian, you know? <laughs> That's pretty much my perspective on it, and I actually did a, I, I won Porkfest Idol last year, which is this uh, event at Porkfest where you get up on the soapbox and you rant, so it's like, it's called Soapbox Idol, and um, I ended up uh, winning that, and kind of, I, what I did was a, was a spoken word poem, and it started off talking about uh, drone, drone strikes and things like that, but it kind of ended with, uh, you know, no, you're never anarchist enough for some people. And uh, we had to do this last, uh, kind of towards the end of the poem, and then uh, actually in the interim in between when they were doing a tiebreaker, we had to do like a one-minute rant off. So my one-minute rant off was basically on how, you know, people are trying to say that you're not anarchy enough, you're not anarchy enough to do whatever it is, and it kind of distracts from the bigger picture, and it's kind of pointless. We have so much more in common with each other. Um, than, than statists do, that's, that's for sure, um, especially if you're an anarchist. So there's so much in common um, that you have that we should be working towards those common goals instead of constantly fighting each other. Um, but I'm also, like, I don't like to tell people what to do and how to spend their time. That's fine. If they find infighting to be productive and useful to them, then that's great. I, I like, well, I'll sometimes write essays about it if something comes up, you know, that's probably what I may be known for, maybe why some people were trying to pull me into a discussion uh, with some of these libertarians. I do, I do write opinion pieces um, from time to time, kind of challenging certain ideas. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I do like to spend more, more of my time in direct action type activism. So I'll, I'll like write articles and stuff like that. But, uh, but that's but yeah, good though. Kind of that's pieces. good. You're, you're dealing with ideas. Like it's great to debate ideas. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think you brought up a really important point that I, I have been thinking about a lot recently which is the dichotomy between respecting someone as a thinker and idolizing someone as a thinker. And I think this is a problem that a lot of people have. Um, well, everywhere, let's be honest. I mean, there's a cult of personality in the Republican and Democratic parties. But libertarians Absolutely. have it as well, and, and we should recognize that. You know, you can look at a guy and say, you know, this guy has horrible ideas, but he also has some good ideas. As long as you don't prop people up to this idol status where they cannot be attacked, their ideas cannot be brought down, 
you know, that's scary. That's when we reach the point of, you know, some real problems. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. Superb. Um, and... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, the kind of idolization of certain, I guess you could call them thought leaders or whatever, is it's going to happen in any kind of movement you have. Um, so I, it's kind of funny that libertarians sometimes, I, I think they find themselves in echo chambers and they think that they're immune from a lot of the things that, you know, are in other political parties or other types of activist groups. And they're, they're not really, uh, these, these things happen throughout and, you know, they can be channeled to be productive or they can be just more divisive and distracting. So, uh, you know, where is the balance in that, I guess, is the question that uh, is kind of rolling around in my head when I think about these things. Sure, sure. But then once again, you know, the answer is direct action, I think, and diverting away from the 395 comment post threads or, uh, you know, 395 comment threads on Facebook there is an answer, you know, there, there are things that individuals can do to actually help things, to help their fellow individuals in the world and also uh, build up alternate institutions to the state that may help bring about the destruction of that, that apparatus. So Bitcoin is the tool that you use. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of other tools as well, but what would you say is the best answer for someone who's asking, okay, you know, I'm tired of all this, this infighting and philosophy. You know, I want to do something. Well, I think you're seeing in, in the Bitcoin sphere some of the most subversive activism, uh, even, the, even greater than in the larger libertarian sphere. Uh, you're, we're not pandering to politicians. There are some people who are kind of pro-regulation, but there are a lot of hardcore crypto anarchists and a lot of people who are using this technology to directly help people and dismantle certain institutions. So I, I, Bitcoin to me is something that I approach from a very skeptical standpoint. I, my day job is at a precious metals brokerage, so it's something that I was a bit skeptical about at first, but I started looking into it and I realized how revolutionary this technology was. And I tell everyone now, if you really want to go where the activism is helping people and you're seeing the results immediately of your activism, Bitcoin is where you want to be. Um, we're actually doing Bitcoin in the Beltway in DC next weekend. And this is actually going to be a very radical Bitcoin conference. There are a few others that I've gone to where, uh, especially the the last one in New York, I had some friends go to that one, and it was very pro-regulation. You're kind of dealing with these these regulators who are saying, "Oh no, we already have everything set in place to crush you." And there, and even in Miami at the Miami Bitcoin conference, you saw a lot of that kind of attitude, like, "Oh, you silly anarchists, you're not going to escape our our clutches." Um, but we're going straight into DC with some of the most radical people in Bitcoin right now. We're going to have Angela Keaton from Antiwar.com speaking. Davi Barker from Bitcoin Not Bombs, uh, Jason King, Sean's Outpost, Cody Wilson is going to be the keynote on Sunday, um, Kyle Drake from CoinPunk, he's actually uh, coming up with these open source ATMs that he's trying to get on the streets and get out to people basically before the regulators can get to them, similar to what Cody Wilson did with the 3D printed gun. So uh, it's going to be a really exciting conference and it's not going to be one of these kind of stuffy things that you're going into and having to listen to these people say, oh, we're going to, you know, come down on you and, you know, regulate you. And I had a woman, uh, what was her name? She, she testified in these uh, FinCEN meetings um, that, they, that they were having. And she basically said at the Miami conference, just very straight faced, you know, a lot of people in this room are going to jail. Huh. And I, <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. Like, scary uh trying to scare us with your with your threats basically and uh it's kind of unfortunate that people have that mindset but this is a technology that's outpacing regulation so it's it's extremely exciting and whether or not it's bitcoin just the blockchain technology itself is really fascinating and there are a lot of other programs coming out too a lot of other applications and uh, things being developed things like made safe trying to make a create a more open internet um so in that, in this whole whole field of tech and cryptography, you're seeing some of these outrageous developments that are really undermining 
what we uh, have kind of come to grow comfortable with as far as government. Definitely, definitely. That's so cool. That's radical. That's cheesy, I know, but I mean, you know, it's the double entendre there. I, I love it. I love it. Everybody needs to, if you're in the area, go check out Bitcoin in the Beltway. Even if you're not, just drive or fly there. Uh, check out Bitcoin.bombs. Everybody in libertarianism seems to want to fight. Can we be friends, MK Lords? Yes, let's let's all get along. I, I really think we can. <laughs> and uh, and one more note about Bitcoin in the Beltway: ten yes. percent of the proceeds are going to Sean's outpost. And just this week, I had an interview set up with a guy. I'm gonna have to get up with him later this week. But he made it into a home off of the streets through Bitcoin and Sean's Outpost helping him. And this has happened for about 10 people so far. Uh, Sean's Outpost has fed a little over 60,000 meals, delivered 60,000 meals to the homeless population in Pensacola. So this is going towards a, a group who's shown results and that you can you know, help these people out who need it the most. That's beautiful. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Um, I thank can't you. wait to have you back on at any point in the future. And uh, once again, it's just been a huge pleasure. Thanks so much, Kyle. Thanks for having me. It's <laughs> been really great talking with you. All right. Have a great day. You too.